everybody and welcome to the Environmental Learning Center at Cockpit Community College. I'm Maggie, an educator here at the ELC, and this is week three of our Wildlife in the Watershed live stream series, where each week we learn about a different animal that calls the wetland their home. So these last couple of weeks we've learned about beavers and mallards, and this week I'm very excited to be teaching you about the raccoon. Raccoons are a very iconic nocturnal animal. Uh, nocturnal meaning that they are awake during the night and sleep during the day so we're unlikely to really run into them much uh you can still see them during the daytime before um you know you may have seen them at the daytime before uh because they just like us you know we might occasionally stay up at night they might occasionally be out uh during the day you know getting a snack or whatever so i'm very excited to uh to learn more about them with you today so in order to better get to know this guy, we are going to be looking closer at this mount uh, raccoon here. We are also going to be coming raccoons ourselves, looking for the perfect habitat, and also uh, take a look and do some spying on the raccoons that live here at the ELC right now. It's going to be super fun. So glad you're joining me here today. Uh, the ELC here, as you can see behind me, is a wetland. A wetland meaning a area of land that is covered in water and there's plenty of water behind me. Uh, you might also see all types of different um, creatures um, hanging out behind me. I've seen a lot of mallards swimming behind me, also a lot of uh, spotted toeys and uh, songbirds of various types flying around um, and they're very active right now. So despite the fact that it is winter and it's a little bit colder, we can definitely tell that spring is on the way just because everything is so active. So I'm curious to see how many different animals you'll see behind me. Uh, I also saw a squirrel running down the tree right behind me as well. Um, so all types of fun stuff going on here at the ELC. So just a couple of things before we get started. Uh, Michelle is once again our camera person behind the camera. Uh, and she also will be the one monitoring our Zoom chat. So if you have any questions at any point during this live stream about raccoons, please make sure to put it into the Zoom chat and I'll make sure to answer them all at the very end. You should also hopefully have an activity sheet in front of you. This week's activity sheet being titled Rocking Raccoons. Um, and this time it is a vocabulary bingo. So we have um, how many? Eight different um, vocabulary words, the center being a free space, go ahead and, and check that one off. Um, but I'm curious to see how many different definitions you'll be able to get uh, throughout. I actually have already um, defined two things on this sheet, so I hope you're paying attention. Alrighty, let's get started looking at this guy right here. So this is a raccoon mount, meaning that it was once a living raccoon, uh, but it is now been stuffed and preserved so that we can look at it and learn from it for years to come. This raccoon is a little bit smaller than your typical raccoon, um, or it's in the smaller range. So raccoons can be typically anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds, and this guy I think is closer to the 10 pound range. Uh, he's also quite a bit lighter than uh, most raccoons. If you look at that iconic mask on his face that raccoons have, um, it actually is a bit of a lighter brown um, when I feel Usually, you can see it's it's a black or a dark gray. Um, some cool things, some cool physical adaptations about a raccoon. Um, physical adaptations referring to things in the raccoon's body that, um, or parts of a raccoon's body that help them live in their environment well. Um, so their mask could be considered an adaptation. We're actually not completely sure the uh, definitive reason as to why raccoons have masks. Uh, but there's quite a di few different theories, one of which could be it helps raccoons identify each other. So when they see another raccoon, they go, oh, yeah, you're one of us, you know. Um, it could also be camouflage, you know, when they're peering around. Maybe you're less likely to, to see them if they're, they're looking at you through a hole or something. Um, but it could also be to help them with uh, bright lights. So if you've ever seen a football player uh, put paint or tape underneath their eyes like this, have you ever seen a, a football player like this? The reason why they do that is so that um, the bright light of the sun or the stadium lights or whatever doesn't blind them because the black actually absorbs a little bit of that light. So that is just one theory as to why raccoons have a mask. It could be uh, because they're like football players. But 
Another great adaptation of the raccoon is their hands. They have a great sense of touch. Uh, so their ability to feel things, they're able to feel a lot of details. Um, and it allows them to, to almost see with their hands. It's kind of their superpower. So they'll stick their, their little front paws into water um, and feel around. So although they can't see into the murky water very well, they can feel like, oh, is this a clam? Is this a fish? You know, what do I want to eat this? Or is this just a rock? Um, and their paws are actually are really great for that. Have you ever heard of a raccoon um, looking like they wash their food in water before they eat it? Uh, because they tend to stick food in the water and then move it around with their hands. So it really does look like they're washing it. Uh, the theory for that actually is they're not washing it. They're just trying to get a better feel. So their hands are theorized to actually work better and feel better underwater. Um, so the raccoon is just trying to get a better idea of what, what it's holding. So if we actually look at, um, this is a, a, a replica of a raccoon paw. Uh, we can see that their paws kind of look like our hands, right? They've got these like long fingers and a thumb. Um, and because of that, are very dexterous and they're able to um, pick up and, and manipulate all types of different objects. Um, and because of that, they're able to get into trash cans really easily. You might have experienced that before, a raccoon getting into your, your home's trash. Um, and they're also able to, to climb up trees really well, uh, which is super important for them. Another thing I want to point out is I have a replica of a raccoon skull right here. Um, so Raccoons are omnivores, meaning that they eat both plants and animals. We'll get into what exactly they eat a little later, but you can actually tell that they're an omnivore, meaning they eat both plants and animals, um, just by looking at their teeth. So if you look at the back of their mouth, you can see they actually have these, you know, slightly flatter molars, which are great for grinding up food in the back of their mouth um, and grinding up plant matter specifically. But then in the front here, they've got these super sharp canine teeth, uh, which are great for tearing apart meat and animals. Um, and so just by looking at this, you can kind of see uh, that, that they're designed for both plants and animal eating. Um, if you take a moment to use your own tongue to feel your own teeth in your mouth, you can actually feel, you know, feel the teeth in the back of your mouth and feel the teeth near the front. Do your back teeth molars, are they flatter? Are they great for grinding up plants? And then versus your front teeth, what are your front teeth really good at doing? Most people are omnivores as well. Uh, so we also do, uh, as well as the, just like the raccoon, have those flat molars in the back and then slightly sharper canines in the front, which is pretty cool. So let's for a moment imagine that I'm a raccoon. Okay, so raccoons need to find um, everything in their habitat in order to survive. So the aspects of a habitat are food, water, shelter, a place to raise young, and space. So we have plenty of space here at the ELC, so I think we've got that covered. Uh, but as for all of the other parts of a habitat, the things that make a raccoon happy and at home, um, one of which is water. So behind me, you can see we have plenty of water. Raccoons do drink water like we do. Uh, they tend to drink it from ponds or puddles. Um, but they also really like the water for another reason, and that's because a lot of the food they love is in the water. So they'll walk through the water, they'll, they'll feel with their hands to try to find food. Uh, that can include uh, clams, snails, fish, uh, bugs, various like larvae of different bugs, um, and also uh, crawdads or crawfish or you know, whatever term you want to use to describe those. Um, crawdads are um, basically, if you haven't seen them before, tiny little lobsters uh, that are found in fresh water here um, or in the United States. So I remember throughout the summer, you know, walking barefoot through a creek, I often see little crawfish, um, you know, scurrying under rocks um, and things like that. So crawdads are basically the the lobster of the raccoon, so it's a nice delicacy for them when they find it. Um, and so they probably are finding plenty of those here at the ELC. Um, raccoons also find food on land. Um, sometimes they'll be going through our garbage and trash um, and eating out of our garbage cans. Like I said before, their hands are very good at opening up things. Um, but as for 
actual things out here. Um, they love to eat fruit and berries um, and nuts and seeds. And so over here, we actually have quite a few snowberry bushes. Uh, we have some rose bushes with some rose hip buds on them. Um, and in order to get a, in order to get a better look at those things, I actually picked off a little bit um, of a snowberry and a rose hip. Um, so right here, you know, you can see all these white berries, you know, referred to as snowberries because they truly are as white as snow. Um, these are toxic to people, so please do not attempt to eat these <laughs> if you come to the ELC or see them around. Uh, but they are a native um, berry that I'm sure me, the raccoon, would love to eat. And then we also have um, a little rose bud here, uh, which is very nutritious as well um, for a little raccoon to eat. On land, raccoons also love to look around for bugs and worms. Um, so they'll find uh, piles of dead leaves, you know, and, and search around in there um, and find some worms. I actually, earlier today, um, did a little bit of digging, really got into the, the spirit of the raccoon um, and found some guys in here. So you've probably held one of these before. You've probably seen them around a lot. Um, but here is a little earthworm. May not look super appetizing to us, um, but if I was a raccoon, I would absolutely be slurping this guy up. Absolutely delicious. But I'm not a raccoon, so I'm going to go ahead and put him back. Alrighty. Another thing raccoons love to eat is birds' eggs. So I actually have right over here in the crook of this tree, I've placed a little nest. I wonder if you noticed it behind me. But this right here is a robin's nest. You can tell it's a robin's nest because a lot of mud uh, was included in the construction of this nest, kind of similar to our friend the beaver we talked about. Um, but you can also see they have these beautiful light blue eggs. Um, these are just the shells of some eggs. Um, so this is very clearly a robin's nest. I did place that nest there on purpose, um, and so I feel comfortable picking it up. Uh, but if you find a bird's nest anywhere, please don't pick it up like I did. <laughs> you don't want to disturb the bird. Um, but yeah, if I was a raccoon climbing up a tree and I came across this, I would absolutely be eating up these eggs. Um, they're absolutely delicious. If a mallard comes across, or if a raccoon comes across a mallard's nest, do you think you'd eat that too? The answer is yes, that'd be very delicious. Raccoons will also eat small animals. They'll eat um, squirrels, uh, mice, anything they can really get their hands on. Uh, they're really good at having a big variety of things to eat. Raccoons also really appreciate um, our wetlands because the water here does get filtered um, through the soil and through the plants near the soil. Um, and it creates a really great home for all those bug larvae in the water. And that brings all types of other animals around. Um, and they just absolutely adore it. Um, and so having clean water and a clean space is really important for the raccoon. So I know we're running a bit short on time, but I would really love to show you guys um, some of the things that raccoons have left behind here at the ELC that have shown that raccoons do live here. So let's take a really quick look at that. So just a couple months ago, um, I found raccoon tracks, and just a little while before then, we were actually able to get raccoons on camera. So two amazing ways to know if nocturnal animals are around are to look at their tracks, which are the markings that their feet leave behind, um, and set up a trail camera that is motion activated at night so that you'll be able to um, take a look at what they're doing. So here's the picture of the tracks that I uh, took just a couple months ago. Now, when looking at this, how can we tell that these are raccoon tracks versus, let's say, uh, dog tracks or even people? Well, as we can see, they have uh, these tracks left behind. They're, they're nice long fingers, you know, that are, are very iconic of the raccoon um, that allows them to do all types of really cool stuff. Then right here, we have 
the night cam footage. I am so happy that we were able to catch a raccoon on footage. What do you think this guy is doing walking through the water? Is he searching for something? Yep, he is searching for food. Oh, and did you see that? A little tiny creature just ran across the center of the screen from the right side to the left side. Let me go ahead and rewind that to see if we can really get a look. So the raccoon leaves on the right side of the screen and right near the center of the screen, something's running. Do you see that? It's like a little tiny creature like hopping across the screen. So that could either be a crawfish, like I mentioned, those little lobster things, um, or it could also be a little frog, which frogs are another thing that raccoons um, absolutely love to eat. So very cool. A couple of quick things I forgot to mention as well is the other aspects of the raccoon's habitat. So they tend to find shelter up in tall trees, um, often evergreen trees. And then they love to raise their young in hollow logs or hollow trees uh, anywhere, or even like abandoned burrows in the ground, um, anywhere where they can fit um, their, their kits, which are what we call baby raccoons. Um, but I wanna make sure that we have plenty of time to answer any of your questions. So uh, please type them in the chat um, and I will make sure to answer your question about raccoons. Do you have any at the moment? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. One question that I had about raccoons was where are they most common? Because I know that uh, raccoons are you know, all over the place. They are a very common animal, um, but I wanted to know where exactly do they live? So raccoons actually live um, in all of North America, except for the very tippy top of Canada, because it's very, very cold there, um, but all of North America, and then a lot of the tip of um, South America as well. And the state where they're the most common is actually North Carolina, which is very interesting. That's a great question. Someone just asked, are there different kinds of raccoons? And that really connects with what I just said, which is super great. So raccoons actually do have some variety to them based off of where they live. So if you go up to Canada and you find a raccoon, they're likely to look really soft and fluffy. And that's because they have a lot of fur uh, that helps them stay warm. And then if you go down to South America or Mexico, uh, you'll see that they look a lot skinnier. They look a lot more like a lemur, I suppose. Um, and so uh, those are common. There's also um, a different mammal here in Oregon that's also nocturnal, referred to as the ringtail, uh, which I actually didn't know existed until recently. Um, so I highly recommend you look up that as well. They look kind of like raccoons. They act a lot like raccoons, um, but they're a completely, a very different animal. So super cool stuff. Yeah, that's a great question. Someone just asked, how long do raccoons typically live? Um, and because of a lot of things, so um, disease, uh, getting hit by cars, you know, lots of really tragic things. Raccoons actually don't tend to live that long, only a couple of years, but I believe, I actually have it written down, um, that, oh, actually, I don't, they can live up to 16 years. That's, that's the amount. So yeah, they can live quite a long time, uh, but they typically don't. Uh, how do they do in the cold? You answered that one. Uh, what are their predators? It's a great question. Someone asked, what are the raccoons predators? So uh, they have quite a few predators of, um, you know, those bigger animals like cougars, bears, um, but then also um, coyotes, uh, but also the smaller raccoons, the baby raccoons have to be really careful about hawks and owls uh, because they can just um, attack them from the sky. So, yeah, but as long as they, they stay in their shelters and and uh, all that, they should be should be good. What kind of food do they wash before eating? Good question. Someone asked, uh, what kind of food do they wash before eating? So um, like I said before, they're not really washing it. They are just sticking in the water to feel it better. Um, but I think they do that with a lot of different foods. I personally have seen actually a raccoon uh, take a clam shell and stick it in water and kind of move it around and open up the clam to eat it, um, which is super cool. But I'm sure they do it with all types of different foods, as long as water's available to them. What weather do raccoons like to be in the most? Mm, that's a good question. Someone asked, what weather do raccoons like to be in the most? I would say, like a lot of animals, the purpose of having a shelter in a tree um, or somewhere else is to protect them from rain and from hail and from snow. Um, so I'd probably say that raccoons like the same weather that we do, probably a nice sunny day um, so that they're, they're nice and comfortable. Okay, are they an endangered species and how much do they weigh? 
Okay, two questions in one. Someone asked, are they an endangered species? Um, which, no, they're very common because they've been able to adapt to um, ever-changing things. Um, lots of raccoons, um, you know, despite us humans, you know, cutting down trees and putting buildings there instead, uh, raccoons have been able to, you know, sneak into buildings and like sleep in people's garage and things like that. Um, and because of that, they've actually been able to keep their population pretty high despite habitats being um, destroyed pretty often. Um, and then the second part of the question is how much do they weigh? Uh, which they typically weigh 10 to 20 pounds, um, but they can weigh up to 35, which is pretty big. Uh, do people tend to hunt them? That's a good question. Someone asked, do people tend to hunt them? Um, I don't think it's a very popular thing to hunt, um, but because they are um, very common, I'm sure I'm sure it happens. I don't know. <laughs> how do raccoons get into humans? Yeah, good question. So how do raccoons get into human areas? I think because the fact that they're nocturnal and the fact that they're really good at climbing and the fact that they're really good at opening things with their hands, they're able to get into all types of different places. Question, are they still a type of hat? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Someone asked, are they still a type of hat? Like a Davy Crockett? Is that who, who wears um, a raccoon hat? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so maybe maybe raccoons are hunted more than I thought thought they were because yeah, some people like to make hats. <laughs> but already, thank you so much for all of your questions. I'm glad that you're super curious about raccoons. I hope that um, when you're walking around, um, you maybe look up into the trees a little bit more and think to yourself, oh, a raccoon might be sleeping up there right now. Um, but I hope you'll join us next time to learn about great blue herons, which are also known as the pterodactyl of the wetland. I'm very excited. Um, but until then, take care, get outside, um, and respect all those who live there. All right, until next time. Bye.